again here in the Bronx courthouse. But today, we're grateful that this judge followed suit and is remanding this perp to prison. We're thankful to the district attorney's office for the way they presented a professional case in front of the grand jury. We're thankful to the members of the Bronx community who sat in that grand jury, took this case seriously, and made sure that this perp was indicted and kept behind bars. We're in a dangerous time in this city. And as police officers, we stand here and once again ask for your help. You know, it's not unusual. There's a lot of press talk about a threat against New York City police officers. But quite frankly, that's not unusual for those of us that have a shield on our chest. We deal with those threats on a regular basis. But we do need the community's help. When you hear something, please let the police know. When you hear something's going to happen, let us know. So our detectives can bring them in, question them, and avert any kind of tragedy, attack, or disaster. As we know, there was an assassin walking our streets. They not only tried to assassinate New York City police officers in a radio car, they not only barged in to kill police officers in our station house, but tried to kill the civilians that work there as well. Those civilians that live in this very community. So when the community indicts this would-be assassin in the grand jury, they're protecting themselves as well. We need your support. We're citizens of this city. We work in this city. We travel in the city. We're no different than you. We just wear a different kind of uniform than you do. And when an assassin walks the street, they may be aiming at us, but they may also hit you. So we ask our police officers, of course, to remain vigilant, to remain aware, to keep your head on a swivel, because you may not only be saving your own life, you'll be, be protecting innocent citizens as well. We thank you for covering this story. We'll be back. We make a promise to the families of our police officers that are killed, and we make that promise to the, the families of our police officers who are injured, that you may not be able to be here today, but your blue family of all ranks, we will. We'll make sure we're your eyes and ears to make sure we get justice. We'll make sure we're your voice. We'll be a soft voice or we'll be a loud voice, but we'll be your voice. So we make this promise again. When this scale comes back to court, we will be here as well. We will quietly sit in those pews to make sure that as citizens that wear blue, that we want to see justice. We put a call out recently saying, you know what, our elected officials who are part of the problem on the street right now, you're welcome to sit amongst us. You're welcome to sit here and support police officers. You're welcome to support those civilians, those citizens that were almost assassinated as well. Well, none of us got that tap on our shoulder by any of our elected officials saying, please, can you slide over so I can sit too? So the citizens can see that we support the police? Well, we'll be here. We make that pledge again. If you want to take our seats, we'll respectfully give them up to you because you have an obligation to make sure there's justice for all, including police officers. Questions? Pat, can you, um, good afternoon. Uh, issues regarding the death of his son, maybe drug activity, and may not have been, you know, had his son afterwards. Can you speak to that, please, if this was a suspect who yes. has mental issues? Sure. Or many, issues? many people, citizens, police officers alike, deal with tragedies in their life. Unfortunately, losing a child, there's nothing worse I could not imagine. But the families deal with that. They don't go out and try to assassinate police officers wasn't the police officer's fault that there was a tragedy in his family, and that's not an excuse to try to cause tragedy in other families. 
We say he should get treatment. He should get that treatment by the criminal justice system. He should get that treatment behind bars. Would Sir? you think this, a lot of people have speculated because of that tragedy, this may have been an attempt to be um, suicide by cops. Can you speak to that if that if you have circulated that theory at all? Look, he owned that weapon. He didn't just get that weapon, I surmise, just that day. He was walking the streets with that weapon looking for an excuse to use it. A death, a tragedy, sadness is not an excuse to kill another human being, but that's what he did. We cannot take one tragedy and forget the many tragedies that we hear. I believe the judge read, read out that there was 11, 12 indictments, not only attempted murder of police officers, but attempted murder of all of you as well. Attempted murder of the people that were walking past the station house, those standing on the street corner, maybe a person speaking to the police officer. So one tragedy doesn't give you permission to create a worse tragedy. Sir, could, uh, yes, sir. as you know, there was another arrest today, a, an officer, a man making threats against officers you had warned, your fellow officers. What can you tell us about that arrest? And how was that threat made specifically? I'm not sure. That's a question for the police department, and that investigation continues, no doubt. But it's not unusual for us to deal with threats on a regular basis. We're getting those threats more and more. Look, it doesn't always take a credible threat for a police officer to be dangerous. There was no threat this last weekend. There was no news reporting a credible threat, but an assassin tried to kill us anyway. So they'll investigate that. They'll see the seriousness of it. But the message to our police officers is you need to be ready at any moment. Whether you have 30 days on the job or 30 years, you need to be ready because that next person may not be a good person. Evil walks amongst us. But we need the citizens' help as well. You may well hear that threat first. Please come in and help us. Help us help you. Because a bullet is indiscriminate. It may miss their target and hit someone else. So we need your help. If there's guns on the street, we need your help. You know, disregard the fact that the criminal justice system now is spitting out the criminals back onto the streets. That's for them to work out. The politicians need to listen to the police officers on the street the citizens saying, we can't stand for this. It's getting more dangerous. But we ask the public, don't listen to that noise. You know evil. You know if there's guns on the street. If there's guns on the street, call us. We want to help save your life. And quite frankly, we want to protect ourselves as well. Pat, as you know, the uh, video of this incident from inside the precinct was circulating very quickly after it. Now the officers who access those files in the computer doc, computer, um, in the computer, they are now facing potential disciplinary action. What do you say? Do you think it assisted the public by getting this information out? Or do you say they violated policy? That, that'll be looked at internally by the police department. But what police officers, our motive always is, is to warn our fellow police officers who may be just coming to work may just be coming in to say, look out, this is what we have on the street. So it's nothing more than that, but I'm sure that investigation will continue as well. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you covering this important story. Thanks, everyone. Be careful. It's cold out today, but that doesn't mean the killers aren't on the street. Be careful. Have a safe talk.